Once again, welcome to our online event for the Early Childhood Education Program. So tonight we are going to be speaking specifically about our Early Childhood major. Um, uh, great program here at the University of Cincinnati. And it, it, we are going to be talking about several things here, uh, answering questions. So if you have questions and you're here tonight, make sure you use our chat feature. Uh, we will be addressing questions as we go throughout the presentation. I want to introduce our guest panelists tonight. Uh, we have Amos Goodwin, Katie Dunn, and Maggie Adams. So if you guys want to just real quick say hey, you can unmute yourselves. Turn your video on for a second and just say hey real quick. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, and real quick, just so we can just do some introductions here. Uh, we'll start with Amos and then we'll go to Katie and then Maggie. Uh, if you guys want to just introduce yourself, your name, what year you are here at UC. Oh, hello everyone. Sorry. My name is Amos. <laughs> um, I'm a first year student here, um, early child education. Hey guys, my name is Katie. I'm also a first year studying early childhood education. Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Adams and I'm actually a senior in early childhood. Cool. Uh, well, um, students, those of you that are here, if you've been admitted in for the fall semester, uh, congratulations on um, your admission here to the University of Cincinnati. And we are just so excited to welcome you here to UC. If you are not in Minnesota and just looking to get some information, hopefully you, we will help uh, hopefully answer a lot of questions. So feel free to post any questions that you guys may have tonight. All right, so just kind of a brief overview of what we're gonna be going through. We're gonna review the program and um, talk about life as a student, as well as uh, provide some times for Q&A. And so really, I'll be allowing the students to really do, be doing quite a, a bit of what we talk about tonight. Um, and if you guys have questions, feel free to direct questions towards me or towards the students as well. So going right into the program and reviewing our early childhood degree. So uh, the early childhood major, it is a, it's a great program and several resources within the entire school of education, starting with the Arlett Center. Uh, the Arlett Center is an on-campus preschool. It's actually a demonstration preschool owned and operated by our college. So our college being the College of Education, Criminal Justice, Human Services, and Information Technology. We have these four schools, the school that we're talking about tonight, obviously the School of Education, specifically the early childhood major. So we have this great on-campus Arlet Center for students to get hands-on experience, observation opportunities here within this preschool that's available to students right on campus. Urban education, uh, so all of our students are um, required to have urban education experience built into the curriculum and into their student teaching experiences. So we do a lot of that uh, is through our partnership with Cincinnati Public Schools, um, but a lot of our placements can be there or in other areas around the Cincinnati area, but it's really important for our students to have education experiences in a variety of classroom settings. So we have that urban education component built into the curriculum. Several resources that are gonna be available to students with career expos, those mock interview opportunities. So just really providing opportunities for networking uh, practicing, you know, those next step experiences as far as um, meeting potential employers. What do you do when you do apply for a job? Is your resume where it needs to be? Uh, you know, many students may not have ever gone through an interview with a school system. And so knowing what to look for and, and how do you prepare a resume when you're applying to schools? How does it look different? What do you need to highlight? And, and actually going through the motions of, of actually going through an interview process with a potential school district. And so great opportunities for students to get some of those hands-on experiences to prepare them for those next steps after, after graduation. 
And then of course the experience side, all of our programs are gonna have a lot of hands-on experience, especially as you get into the student teaching aspect of the program with, you know, especially early childhood education, you know, you guys are gonna get over a thousand hours of student teaching field experience within this program. Uh, and I can't really uh, em emphasize enough of the, how important that experience is to the point where we actually start uh, classroom experiences your first year. So it's not something that you have to wait until later on to do this. Uh, you will get hands-on classroom experiences from day one in this program to kind of help, you know, explore your interest in education and the different grades that are available to you. Uh, but a lot of hands-on opportunities for students within, within the education program. Uh, and just to reiterate, the early childhood education major, uh, this program is going to prepare you for those pre-K through fifth grade, uh, for that grade band. So being able to obtain your teaching license in pre-K through fifth grade. And then uh, our students are teaching all content areas. So you're going to be an early childhood teacher teaching a variety of content uh, from English, English language arts, math, science, social studies kind of content areas. So what I like to do, and this is where I'm going to start bringing in uh, our students. So students, you know, uh, leave your videos off, but go ahead and unmute yourselves. And um, feel free to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, this, I pull up here on the screen, the uh, freshman year courses. And so uh, this is kind of an example of what a typical schedule would be for your fall semester when you start in the fall for a first year student, uh, those courses there, and then your spring semester courses that you would take as well. So students, if you guys don't care to talk about, you know, what, um, what was that first year like? Uh, what were some of these courses like? How have they prepared you for uh, working in early childhood? Uh, yeah, I can start off. Um, so um, actually last semester, um, we actually spent me and Katie actually our uh, first semester um, at Ethel Taylor, um, which is, you guys don't um, care to talk about, you know, what, um, what was that first year like? Yeah, we spent our first uh, semester there at Ethel Taylor. Um, we actually did um, tutoring sessions um, with uh, second and third graders. So we got to uh, have that one -on -one connection with each student and be able to go over things like the um, like reading and math, uh, which is probably right also. Um, so that was a good experience to start off with. And then um, now this semester, we were actually at um, Arlet. Uh, which is our on-campus preschool, um, which is where we got that more um, like interaction in the classrooms where we got to um, see what it's like to actually be in a classroom full of students. Um, so yeah, that's what we're currently what we're doing right now. Um, so yeah, that's what I've had my experiences with. Yeah, and so similarly to what Amos was talking about with our first semester classes, um, that chemistry in today's society course is actually a really incredible course that prepares any early childhood um, educator for the science for like an elementary school. So you're learning everything from like, like why water changes from a liquid to a solid to a gas, things like that. Just being able to kind of teach science classes for um, elementary students, especially now since um, that grade band is fourth and fifth grade. It's a really incredible way to make sure that all the different students um, and content areas are being covered because that science course is like pretty much your overall expansive view on like what science is in an elementary school. Um, I can speak on all of these classes as being a senior in this program. I can think back to a lot of these classes even though they were my freshman year. Um, educational technology, that class was um, really fun. We I got to bring in a lot of technology in, into the classroom. We got to explore it. And then being in my practicum and my student teaching, I'm referring back to that class to pull ideas that we used from that class, the technology that we learned about. And I've been able to apply it into the actual classroom in my student teaching. And that's been super cool to be able to go back to those freshman year classes because those classes were super important. And I remember learning um, about all of those and being able to apply it even in senior year, I think that's pretty awesome. All right, thanks y'all. Um, so kind of moving on and again, this is kind of one of those presentations where if you have, if you have questions throughout this, feel free to post questions in the comment box. 
I will be happy to field questions as we go. So I'd like to kind of bring up the structure as far as how the student teaching portion of this program works. And so, uh, of course, you have your freshman year of, of, you know, of those classroom experiences. And you can see even back on that, uh, if I can actually just go back really quick on um, on this program, you think about a, a college degree and you, your freshman year courses, you're already doing a lot of courses in your major, uh, which is huge, right? You're really going to start seeing, is this something that I really want to do? Is this something I want to pursue before you get too far down a program and maybe think you might need to change your, ma change your major? You really start getting into the program your first semester of actually taking major specific courses doing a lot of classroom observation type of things as well. Like you hear from the students, you know, you have those hands-on stuff and also getting out into the classrooms um, with, within your first year. And I don't know, if, did you guys kind of touch on, or could you guys touch on how important that was for you as students to get experience just your first year? That was actually one of the reasons why I chose UC because a lot of other institutions um, were primarily like, oh, we'll get you out in the classroom your junior year. But for me, like I had taken a um, like a course in high school where I got to teach and be part of the classroom already. So I felt like that would have been, would have been like backtracking for me. Um, so being able to be in the classroom, getting hands on experience, really getting that observation time has been so fundamental, not only for my own learning, but also for my growth throughout this program, because I feel like it's just preparing me so much more than maybe any other program that I was looking at prior. Uh, yeah, to go off of what uh, Katie said, I also had that same, um, you know, situation where a lot of colleges, they were also saying like, yeah, um, we're planning on get you, getting you into classroom like your junior year, maybe like your late sophomore year. Um, but I feel like it's always great to have that um, early experience in your like freshman or even uh, early junior year, just so you know if education or any other major that you're trying to go into, if that's really what you want to pursue for the rest of your life. So um, yeah, I really feel like that these experiences here at UC have been a very good help um, and adapt to like what I want to do for the rest of my life, which is be in education, so yeah. Cool, thanks y'all. Maggie, did you want to add anything? I agree with them. Um, I just think those early experiences really did get me excited about my journey in education. And I, I knew from the second week of being on that, taking a bus to go start tutoring students that this is something I wanted to do. So those early experiences really helped me. Cool, thanks guys. Um, so then moving on now into this, the rest of this program. So obviously after your freshman year, you're going to start getting into the student teaching portion of this program. And so you'll see your first actual student teaching portion is going to start the spring semester of your sophomore year. And so you'll actually do five different placements as you progress through the program, starting with a preschool placement, which could actually be right on campus with our Arlet Center, uh, the on-campus on preschool. Then you'll go to a different school uh, classroom and do kindergarten. And then you'll go to a third school environment and do a fourth or fifth grade classroom placement there. So you're getting a pretty broad already within your, by then your pretty broad placement of schools. And then your senior year will be your fourth school placement. You'll be there the whole year. And this will be your primary internship and you'll, so you'll stay there the, both semesters and uh, by spring semester, that will be more of a full-time basis, really in the classroom every day, because you just won't have as many classes in your, in your schedule that you're taking daily. Uh, and that'll be a primary grade level classroom as well. So um, students, uh, I know Maggie, you're a senior, so Amos and Katie are still very new to the program, um, but any and all of you can feel free to talk about, you know, what has, and I know Maggie, things have changed because our curriculum used to be a pre-K through third grade. Yes. And now pre-K through fifth grade uh, for the changing times in education, but uh, still feel free to talk about kind of what, how the student teaching experience played a role in this program and, uh, and how that looks for you. Um, I'll, I'll start. So yes, it has been different. Um, I did do the endorsement. So I did add grades four and five, which is great. And I'm so thankful that they did this, um, change the licensure. But I'm in a first grade classroom right now for my primary internship. And um, I just looking over the experiences that I've had in preschool, kindergarten, um, fourth grade and um, first grade, I feel like I am 
very prepared to have my own classroom. I feel like I've had a wide range of experiences in the different grades and um, that full-time spring semester, senior year, I mean, you full-time teach, you start in the morning, you end at the end of the day and you're there all day, every day, and you feel like a teacher, you kind of take over the classroom. And I just feel like all the experiences that I've had amongst all the grade levels has really prepared me to have my own classroom. And um, that's just a great feeling because it is a lot to have your own classroom. And when you feel prepared and the experiences that you see has provided me, I, I can't wait to have my own. So um, yeah, each, I just feel like each year I gained more experiences and I just feel really prepared. Cool, thanks Maggie. Uh, Amos and Katie, do you guys have anything to add? Yeah, so I feel like obviously being a first year, we don't get, you know, that full time um, in the classroom. Um, but even just going to Ethel M. Taylor to tutor already, like, I feel like I know so much more about how to speak with a student, how to problem solve with a student, how to teach a lesson in a different way so the student understands it in a different way. I feel like all of these tools that, that I learned. much more like excited and enthusiastic about having my own classroom one day yeah and I totally agree with uh, Katie also um, I definitely feel like being able to have those um, early experiences is also like gives you that chance to like develop those like skills and strategies that you'll need for when you go into those like student teaching um, experiences and everything like you'll be able to take those strategies and everything you're able to implement those uh, while student teaching and also in the future when you actually actually own your own classroom and everything so um, yeah yeah cool <laughs> thanks guys awesome so um, just kind of like some that's that's kind of an overview of our program so you got to really hear from the students as far as you know what they do within their major uh, so now I want to kind of transition into uh, life of a student and, um, and let you guys, the students, kind of share some things. I have a few topics that we'll go through it, but again, if, you, if anyone has questions, feel free to uh, post those in the chat box and we will be happy to uh, field those questions as well. So first, first topic I want to bring up is the uh, academic advising opportunity or academic advising within our college. Every student is assigned an academic advisor uh, to assist them. We have advisors, advisors specifically in education to assist students and with various, various things from class scheduling, program requirements, you know, goal setting, different things on that list there that you can see. Uh, but students, do you guys want to share a little bit about the role of an academic advisor and how they've assisted you in your program and life on campus? Uh, yeah, so the first thing that I can definitely say is um, an advisor, um, well, the advisor should be assigned with, like, you should look at that, like, as like your best friend kind of like um i feel like the advisors here on campus like they're very good at um keep keeping up with you making sure that you're staying on top of everything and then also if you have any concerns like within your classes you can always um you know email your advisor and they'll get back to you as soon as possible and um, i know actually um to put this out there I actually work in the um student services center which is like where the advisors work and just based off of my experience of working with the advisors they're very good with um you know, making sure that each student just, making sure that each student feels comfortable with what they're doing, I guess is the best way to put it. So, um, so yeah, like, I just feel like, you know, that the advisors are basically doing, I don't know, they're good at what they do, basically, I don't know. But yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the best way to put it. I definitely can agree with Amos when he says that your advisor will become like your best friend. And I'm sure Amos and Corbin can vouch for me. They see me in the office all the time. Um, I'm always meeting with my advisor. I just scheduled with her before um, we went on spring break and she was really helpful just making sure that I was meeting all my requirements and that um, I'm trying to hit the goals that I'm wanting to reach within like my GPA or with getting involved here on campus and things like that. So 
Um, they're a really great opportunity. And um, a, your first semester of your first year, you'll get an academic coach. So you'll go into the student service center and you'll meet with a coach, typically um, a student, and they'll kind of walk through kind of your first year as a UC student and um, they'll help you with um, different uh, goals and activities you can do to reach a certain GPA or make a goal or um, in some cases maybe direct you if you're struggling in a class where to go for that. Um, so they kind of pair up with those advisors as well just to make sure that everyone is on top of their game and doing what they are wishing to do here while being a student. Cool. Thanks guys. Uh, so let's talk a little about campus life. Uh, you know, there's a lot of aspects to campus life and, um, and, and what goes on for a student at the University of Cincinnati. You know, what are, students might wonder what the dining halls are like, what kind of events do you go to, what are you involved with? Uh, do you guys want to kind of share a little about what campus life for each of you, or what campus life is like for each of you? Um, yeah, so um, I'm not going to lie, like before I came to UC, um, I was kind of like a, um, that person that were like that shy person that never really talked to a lot of people but um coming to uc it really um made me step out of my comfort zone um i actually especially like during welcome week i definitely um encourage you guys to get out there and go to those events meet new people and everything um that's that's usually the week before uh, classes start and everything um but yeah um on campus um i'm, I'm not gonna lie i haven't been um, involved in a lot only because um, I'm more like a workaholic <laughs> but um, but yeah um, I'm currently I am involved in BAC which is um, a black arts black arts collaborative group which is like with drama music um, and dance um, so I'm in the choir actually so just being able to um, you know meet new people um and just be able to experience different cultures and everything has been a great experience um sometimes i go to you know karaoke nights on thursdays at uh cast Keller. so uh, they also have events every every night during the week there um, that's a good place to go to meet new people also um so yeah just being able to get get it going out to those events and everything that you'll see um especially in tuc there's a lot of events going on in there um so yeah, just just being like involved in everything, I would definitely recommend uh, just so you can get out there, you know, um, network, all that other stuff. So yeah. So I had a little bit of a different experience in Amos. I was a little bit more reverse. I didn't work, but I was involved in like everything under the sun. And the reason that I got involved was just to meet people and get myself out there. And I found all of these great organizations to join through the organization fair. So during Welcome Week. Um, all of these different clubs and organizations and groups will set up kind of around campus um, and they'll post flyers and things like that. And you can literally just walk up to their table, say that you're interested in joining, write your name down and they'll get you um, some more information through email or whatnot about what their club or organization or activity involves or entails. Um, so that's kind of how I got involved. Um, I definitely recommend it. Like Amos was saying, it's a great way to meet people. There's so many things around campus that you can get involved in. Um, and something that really helped me was getting involved with things or um, activities that my roommates were also involved with. So that way I had like a friend to go to the rec center with or to go to like a baseball or a basketball game with or something like that. So um, just anywhere that you can meet like one friend, it'll turn into two friends and then it'll turn to four. It's just that chain reaction. So just putting yourself out there and getting to know people and things like that. Um, especially during welcome week and orientation. I think that's like the best place to meet friends. Um, that's where I met like all of mine throughout that first couple of weeks. So, yeah. Um, I can speak on that. Um, just getting highly involved, like your freshman year, like the organizations that I joined my freshman year, I'm now ending my college career in the same organizations. And I've met so many people, um, some of my lifelong friends I've met through um, these clubs and organizations. I'm part of a UC women's club volleyball team and we got we get to travel all over the US and it's been so cool to meet people from other universities and continue to play the sport that I love with some of my best friends. Um, and I just think really pushing myself freshman year to get involved in a lot. I know sometimes that might be scary and nerve wracking, but the payoff at the end is so worth it. Um, so 
freshman year, try to get involved in anything. There's some really goofy clubs on campus. I heard someone made the Milkshake Club. Um, there's just any club out there that you might want to start or that there's out there, just try it. And if it's not for you, that's okay. Just you tried it um, and really get involved freshman year and continue to be involved throughout college because if you move off of campus your freshman year, um, you're not in the heart of it, but it's so important to stay involved because you want to keep making friends. You want to keep making connections through with, you know, faculty, professors, anyone that it'll really help you in the long run. Cool. Um, thanks guys. So, um, what is y'all's favorite restaurant on campus? Ooh, mine is Mr. Sushi. Um, I go there too much. It's half off if you dine in. It's half off every day if you dine in. Are you serious? Um, dead serious. Highly recommend when we can go back to campus. Um, it's so good. I know everyone will say Skyline, but I got to go a different route and say Mr. Sushi for sure. I do like sushi. My favorites, um, Topper's Pizza. I love pizza. Um, I, I'm from Columbus, so I've never heard of Topper's. I don't know if it's a Cincinnati thing or just by campus, but um, it's awesome pizza and $8.99 carry out if you and your friends want to go get a large pizza. It's super fun. Like Katie said, you know, Skyline, that's just the best, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just <laughs> that's nice. that's okay. Um, and then one other question I think I like to ask, you know, when you're when students, as we have some students that might be thinking about uh, which what's the best dorm to live in, what do you guys think? Is it Club Sadal all the way or what? Is it what? Sorry. Oh. Like Club Sadal, like what's your favorite mm -hmm. dorm room? I oh, live in okay. Daniel's and I love Daniel's. Daniel's was so much fun. We had four people to a room. Um, it's, you know, you live next, there's a lot of people on their floor, and I mean, I met so many people on my floor, and we kept our door open. It was a very social dorm. Um, I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. I, so I, I would go Daniels. <laughs> so I lived in Stratford Heights my first year, or this, this year, I guess. Honestly, I kind of wish I lived in a traditional, I wish I lived in an apartment because of the kitchen, but I wish I lived in a traditional because of the social aspect. Uh, I live, Stratford Heights is a um, suite style. So you get your own bathroom, which was the big perk for us. And we were like friends with the people um, in our building, but there's only about 30 people and there's about 20 buildings. So it's a little bit more spread out and not like as social. So I don't know. It's kind of like pick your poison on that one. Yeah, I would definitely have to go with uh, Katie. I actually stayed in uh, CRC, which is like the uh, sweet style dorm. So um, like everyone had their own rooms and I think I only have one other roommate, but um, so I would have to agree with like what she said of getting that, um, that social inter interaction with others and everything. Uh, I know like my friends, they stayed in Daniels. So um, like every time I went over there, like I would meet new people every day. Um, and like you would never get the um, really get that um, that experience at CRC because no one really knew anyone. And like ever, the doors were always closed and everything. So like at Daniel's, like I would always walk past there. I would be a door open. You could just you know pop in and say, "Hey, how's it going?" So um, I definitely felt like I wish I would have chose Daniel's, and I would definitely recommend that to you all. And not even just Daniel's, you know, like um, Calhoun, all and everything. Um, I feel like that those like halls right there it was like the best um college experience dorms yeah. I, I truly feel like I got the real college experience living in a dorm um we had the community bathrooms and at first I was like oh my gosh like, I really don't know if I can do that um but it, I did and it was I don't say like it was awesome but it was just such a growing experience like living with others like so many people on your floor and meeting so many people every morning um I love the social aspect of it so if you're you're wanting to meet a lot of people and be social and even if like that's maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone I would I would really try it and um it'll it'll do do wonders for you so nice that's awesome guys um so we've talked a lot about experiential learning you know the classroom experiences is always huge uh, but can you guys maybe give a little 
you be a little bit more specific or some of the things that you guys have been able to do and how that's played a role and maybe helping you making sure this is the right major for you kind of a thing? Yeah, so previously, like I mentioned, I had been in a classroom when I was in high school. So I knew that I liked teaching, but I didn't necessarily know what grade level I really liked. So when we went to our lit, it is a preschool style. Um, so that's typically like three to five ish year olds. And just being able to see how their grain or see how their brains were growing. And um, they did a lot of experiential like play and touch learning, not necessarily like a lot of like traditional classroom um, learning, if you will, but more so there would be different toys for them to play with um, each day or each week that would be different or um, something that they'd never seen before that they can play with. And that was just so cool to see, especially coming from um, a district where we had a lot of different diversity in how we taught our kids and how we taught our students. But being able to see this from a completely different standpoint was so unique. Um, and it's actually kind of why being at Arlet is more so the reason why um, I'm really interested in teaching kindergarten or first grade and more of those younger grade levels where play-based learning and touch-based learning is so fundamental for them. So I think that has been so great for me to see just different ways that students can learn, not even just by reading a book or hearing a teacher talk, but more so like what they can do with their hands connecting with their brains. Yeah, so um, me personally, um, I kind of I kind of had that same um, experience as uh, Katie did. Um, well, like me personally, when I was uh, younger, well, at a responsible age, um, I actually used to babysit like, you know, family, friends, uh, children, and then also like um, cousins and everything over the summers. Um, and then after, during my senior year in high school, um, I actually only had um, two classes during my senior year so um i really had a lot of free time to where um, i actually spent my um whole senior year after classes about two or three hours a day um just going to the elementary of my school which was data montessori and um i actually um spent that time with one of the sixth grade teachers um and that was actually a part of my volunteer hours for my senior year and just being able to you know um make those connections with each student in the classroom and just getting that experience uh, to see if this was really what I want to go into when I uh, go into college um, and just making sure that um, me and the teacher we actually she actually helped me develop you know new skills and strategies that I can use when I go into education when I uh, get that experience in the classrooms um, like for an example like Ethel Taylor and Arlet um, I use those um, strategies and skills that she taught me um, during my high school senior year. So just being able to, you know, get that teacher experience basically was a good, um, good way during my high school year to know that this is what I wanted to do. Um, so going off what he just said, applying what um, he like he learned from his high school teacher, um, learning in like your college courses, you're learning so many different strategies, behavior management plans, um, you're, you're able to, in your like student teaching, you're able to apply what you're learning in your courses and you're able to try them out in your field experiences. Your mentor teachers um, want you to try out what you're learning. They, they want you to try out your ideas. Um, I've been in preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, fourth grade. So I've had a wide range of experiences. I mean, preschool to fourth grade, those are very different age groups. But um, from my courses, I've been able to apply different strategies based on the age group. And I think that's been so helpful um, as I student taught in each of these learning experiences. And while you're student teaching, you're writing lesson plans and you're actually teaching the content, you're coming up with ideas for the students to do in each content area. And it's, it's really, it's a great experience to have to be able to try out your own ideas and how you would want to run a classroom one day. Um, so yeah, I think you get a lot of experiences in each grade level, no matter what grade you're in that semester, you're, you're going to be able to apply so much that you're learning to each of your experiences. Awesome. Thanks guys. Uh, we've talked a little about student organizations. I do like to bring up that we do have a few specific 
uh, you know, programmatic and college specific organizations. We have our early childhood student club for those students that might want to get involved in that. Uh, and we have a minority association of future educators uh, as well. Um, so you have like those programmatic clubs that help with networking and different opportunities such as that. And then of course, you know, they, the students mentioned some of the additional activities they've been involved with. I think Maggie mentioned like the milkshake club, but you know, whatever that, whatever kind of clubs interest you, uh, there's different ways to be involved, whether that's in your program or there's something that you want to do just for fun. Um, and I know we even have our, our college CECH ambassadors, which is what our students are, who are here tonight, they're, they're all CECH ambassadors as well that help promote the college. And so um, did you guys have anything to add as far as student organizations or any of you in the Early Childhood Student Club? I am. It is so much fun. If you like to hang out with people that are interested in the same things you are and hear from different companies, organizations, schools, things like that, um, every week they'll bring in, or every meeting I should say, they'll bring in um, someone new to talk about how they're implementing a new teaching method or something into their classroom, their work environment, their facilities, whatever it may be. Um, it's not all just that traditional education classroom. We had one lady come in who works in a nature park, talk about all their um, student resources for early childhood education when they have schools visit. Um, it's like the whole day, they'll just spend like the entire day at like this nature ground camp reserve um, and they'll learn about bugs and they'll learn about how to um, like different science things with like the weather and what weather certain animals and bugs and things do well in and things like that so it's a really incredible organization and it's something that um, just brings you that one step further into your involvement with not only your major and your degree but also your colleagues essentially. Cool. Thanks, Katie. Anybody else have anything to add? Um, I don't, uh, not really. I mean, the only thing I could just suggest is basically like go off like what Katie said, basically, you know, just getting uh, involved in those clubs and organizations that have to do with your major, um, just so you know that you're, you know, putting an impact into um, the major that you're going into and everything. Um, I do know that I do get emails, you know, from um, the ECE club. Um, it just doesn't match up with my schedule, so I haven't been able to, you know, actually join the club. But um, I do know that I do get emails, and sometimes I read through the things that they've done that they have impacted the community um, within the early child education major and everything. Um, and then, like, going off of, like, what Corbin said also, um, this is a great um, organization to be in, too, CECH Ambassadors, because you know your nature, um, you know, being a bit a big impact um, on current students and then also um, students like you guys that are coming into, um, that are coming, sorry, to UC and everything. So, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I always like to bring up, make sure you take advantage of opportunities. If you ever wanted to do any additional travel uh, outside of the United States, especially when we're able to travel, you know, we do a lot of opportunities where, where there was like a short term faculty led trip or some students want to go out and do a whole like semester abroad and so there are definitely ways to navigate that uh, education if that's something that's really interesting to you and you want to you want to study abroad make sure you do that early uh, because once you start student teaching you'll need to be in cincinnati uh, but you can certainly do that but prior to that or you could uh, even do it in a summer term and do something um, abroad during the semester and i know in the past our Education students, they've gone to, uh, I think London was where they went previously and explored some of the education, early childhood education systems over there. Um, and that was just a fun like, faculty led trip. I think it was over a spring break. Uh, but there are those kinds of opportunities. And, you know, our college does offer funding to assist with some of the costs. And so you might be uh, able to qualify and, uh, for funding that could assist with some of the additional costs that come with these kinds of uh, trips. Uh, and just a good way to really, like I said, is diversify your experiences, put things on your resume. Uh, it looks good to show that you've traveled to different areas and explore these kinds of environments. Students, do you guys have anything to add on this? Has anyone had taken advantage of any of these opportunities before? Um, I have not been able to.
to go study abroad, but I would highly recommend it. I know a lot of people who have and they've, they've loved it and their pictures are awesome and they come back with such great um, stories and memories that I know will last them a lifetime. So if you um, are able to study abroad and it's something you're interested in, I would highly recommend it. I, I know people who've done it and they don't regret it and it's a great experience. And like um, Corbin said, it's something to add to your resume because you want to have stuff to have to build up your resume and have experiences to talk on. And if you can teach somewhere overseas or in another country, that's definitely a great experience to add. So I want to make sure we have a few minutes left here where we can take some questions. So if you, if you do have questions, we're going to be on here for just a few more minutes to, to take some questions that you guys might have uh, as you're thinking about UC. And, uh, and also, like, even if you don't have questions, I would love to hear from you guys about how, how you are dealing with everything going on with this whole COVID-19 and, uh, you know, not being able to go out and, as much and staying home. Uh, I know for seniors, you know, this is probably not what your senior year in high school, what you envisioned it looking like. Uh, a lot of things have uh, changed. Plans have changed. I know my plans have changed. I had things going on in my life that have been canceled or rescheduled and, uh, you know, having to kind of adjust to this new way, new way of living. You know, I'm, I'm doing this, this event personally from home. Um, but, you know, uh, how are you guys dealing with, what are some resources that you have found that have helped you maybe stay connected with your friends in school? Um, I know there's an app that I use called Marco Polo. I don't know if that's something that anyone's aware of, but I keep in touch with family and friends through that app. It's really cool. Um, but feel free to share any, you know, thoughts or advice for other students as far as what you're dealing with, um, with all of that goes as well. We want to, uh, hear from you on that end. Uh, so we have a question, when, when considering UC, did anything stand out when comparing to other schools? So students, uh, you know, when, when you were thinking about UC, what stood out to you? So for me, um, the fact that we could student teach our first year was like incomparable to anywhere else, especially since, like we mentioned previously, like a lot of institutions are late sophomore or your junior year. And what if you don't like teaching? What if you get two years into your major and you realize, oh, I don't like either early childhood or kids in general or teaching or something like that. So the fact that we literally three weeks into school get to go to a school and tutor students is insane. And also the fact that campus life is so diverse and welcoming and, um, I believe that when you're finding a, a school for you, whether it is UC or another institution, you have to find your best fit. It can't just be the major. It can't just be the school itself because if you change your major, you gotta still love the school. If you're finding that you don't love the school, you gotta still be able to love your major somewhere else. So just finding that best fit for both of those aspects is something that I personally looked into um, a lot when I was going through my college process um, which is why UC was absolutely my, my number one top choice. Um, yeah, uh, to go off of what Katie said also, uh, yeah, you, you just have to know, like, what best fits you. Like, you, only you know, like, what's best for you. So, um, like, me personally, um, I have to agree with Katie also. The experience uh, was definitely the number one thing, uh, of course, just being able to get that hands-on experience your first year. That's very important because you uh, wanted to make sure that this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. And then also just making sure um, – the another reason was um, having those resources and that support uh, from our professors and everything. Um, I actually um, got in contact with a couple. It was, I don't know if they're, I haven't, well, sorry. I actually haven't had these um, professors personally, but um, before um, I actually came to UC, I started connecting with a couple of professors and just seeing like what resources they had and just what um, advice they had to give me like coming into um college and everything, and they responded back very quickly, um, just with a lot of resources and different um, guidance and advice that I can um, have for when I actually come to UC, and just knowing that I have that support and everything was just, um, was very heart-touching, you know, so um, that was just my main thing. Um, I can also speak on what both of those, and what both of those people just said. Um, now that I'm at the end of this, um, when I was choosing UC and looking at other institutions, I what really stood out to me, like they said, um, was 
the experience that we would have so early on. I knew that I wanted to be a teacher when I was in second grade, but having that experience two, three weeks into starting freshman year really helped me realize that this is what I want to do. And it set me on a path to be able to graduate with some, like with a degree that I am so passionate about. Um, so the experience that the experiences that you see provides each student is amazing and you're going to feel ready to have your own classroom. Um, and the other thing when I was picking UC was I wanted to go to a big, a big campus, big school, but I didn't want to have to take a bus or ride my bike for 20, 30 minutes. Um, so that's when I came to UC for a tour, I was like, wow, this is a really, it's a big campus, but I can get to one and to the other in 10, 15 minutes, depending on how fast I wanted to walk. And that's another reason why I really loved the campus. I loved the different buildings. I'm a huge football girl. And the fact that the football stadiums in the middle of campus um, sealed the deal. So um, just whatever, if you're choosing UC or another institution, make sure it feels like a second home. Um, that's really important when you actually leave home and go away to college. Thanks. Uh, then we did have a question like, you know, if students feel like they needed to change their major, you know, those, when you're thinking about changing a major, those, those kinds of decisions vary, whether it's like, sometimes you might want to be, maybe it's changing your major to teaching a different grade level in education, or it could be to going to a totally different program altogether. And so I will say from firsthand, if you are planning on changing your major, uh, be mindful at some other college, if you're, if you're going to a different college, sometimes the requirements can vary depending on what program you're going into. Um, but if you're staying within the college, the process is definitely easier if you're already in the college. And so I think for students in education, and maybe you guys can share on this, you know, if you feel like if you decided you needed to change your major to a different program, do you feel like the process would be pretty simple or has anyone gone through that process before? Um, I haven't gone through that process personally before. Um, I do know that there's a couple students that came into the office before. And um, from what I've known, they haven't had, there hasn't been like a big hassle of, of um, like stress of changing your major or anything. Um, I do know like the, the best thing is um, like, since you, if you are going into early child education, um, the good thing is that the advisor that you have, they're most likely, they might still be your advisor if you change into, like, for example, like if you're an early child education major and you want to go into, like, secondary education or just, like, a different um, field of study specifically, like, reading or something, though, then you might still have that same advisor, which makes it um, even more better. And even if you do, like, decide to change your whole major in general, um, like, UC is a very um, good community, and it's just a very, um, it's not, from what I've known, it's not, like, a big hassle of just changing a major in general, and I feel like that um, you have a good variety of support staff here that will be willing to, you know, help you along the way and everything. So, yeah. cool. Thanks, guys. So, uh, we're going to kind of have to come to a conclude here, but I do like to put up on the screen our social media channels. If you want to follow us on other other channels from Instagram, Snapchat, or Twitter, feel free to follow us on there. My number and email is all, also there on the screen. So, if you have questions later on, you want to reach out to me, I'll be happy to assist you. Uh, answer any additional questions, uh, having a different uh, conversation instead of, instead of a phone conversation, whatever you want to do, however I can assist you with your decisions or you want to look into get some more information about a specific program in our college, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to assist you. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, and students, Maggie, uh, Amos, and Katie, thank you all for being here tonight as well. No problem. Um, if you guys, do you guys have anything else you want to say to the students? Um, no, just good luck, you know, every, with everything, you know, especially with the whole Corona thing, stay safe, stay healthy, <laughs> um, all that jazz. Absolutely. If, if you are an accepted Bearcat, congratulations. Yes. If you are still deciding, we can't wait to see what your final decision is going to look like and what road you might go down, but congratulations overall. I mean, this is a really fun process to be a part of. Good luck to everyone. Um, good luck with your decision on what college you pick um, and go Bearcats. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Go Bearcats. Thanks for being here tonight, guys, and everybody stay safe, stay healthy, have a great week.